Functions let you define reusable pieces of code that perform specific pieces of work. Usually, they're able to receive some values to modify the way they work, but it's not required. Let's start with a simple function. Funk, favorite album, print, my favorite is fearless. With that code in our playground, nothing will be printed. And yes, it's correct. The reason nothing's printed is that we've placed the my favorite is fearless message into a function called favorite album. And that code won't be called until we ask Swift to run the favorite album function. To do that, add this line of code, favorite album. That runs a function or calls it. So now you'll see my favorite is fearless printed out. As you can see, you define a function by writing func, F-U-N-C. Then your function name, my favorite album, then open and close parentheses. Inside we have this block of code that's marked by the open and close braces. We can then call that function by writing its name, favorite album, followed by open and close parentheses. Of course, that's a silly example. That function does the same thing no matter what, so there's no point in it existing. But what if we wanted to print a different album each time? In that case, we could tell Swift we want our function to accept the value when it's called, then use that value inside it. Let's do that now. We'll say func favorite album accepts a name string. And we'll use that inside our print, my favorite is, string interpolation, name. That tells Swift we want the function to accept one value called a parameter, in this case named name. It should be a string. We then use string interpolation to write that favorite album name directly into our output message. To call the function now, you'd write this, favorite album name colon fearless. You might still be wondering what the point is, given that it's still just one line of code. Well, imagine we use that function in 20 different places around a big app. Then your head designer comes along and tells you to change the message to, I love fearless so much, it's my favorite. Do you really want to find and change all 20 instances in your code? Probably not. With a function, you change it once and everything updates. You can make your function accept as many parameters as you want. So let's make it accept a name and a year. So we have, let's do a uh, uh, func print album release name string year int print uh, string interpolation, name was released in string interpolation, year. We now say print album release with name, fearless, and year 2008. These function parameter names are important and actually form part of the function itself. Sometimes you'll see several different functions with the same name, like handle, but with different parameter names to distinguish the different actions. Sometimes you want parameters to be named one way when a function is called, but another way inside the function itself. This means that when you call a function, it uses almost natural English, but inside the function, the parameters have sensible names. This technique is employed very frequently in Swift, so it's worth understanding now. To demonstrate this, let's write a function that prints a number of letters in a string. This is available using the count property of strings. So we could write this, func count letters in string, string, a string, inside there, string interpolation, print the string, string interpolation string, has string interpolation, string dot count letters. End the function. With that in place, we call it like this, count letters, in string, string, hello. While that certainly works, it's a bit wordy. Plus, it's not the kind of thing you'll say out loud. Count letters in string, string, hello. Swift's solution is to let you specify one name for the parameter when it's being called and another inside the method. To use this, just write the parameter name twice, once for external, once for internal. For example, we could name the parameter my string when it's being called externally and stir inside the method. 
So here, we need to use stir, and here, stir, and we call the function down here, we say my string. You can also specify an underscore as the external parameter name, which tells Swift that it shouldn't have any external name at all. For example, count letters in string, underscore stir, means we now just say count letters in string, hello. As you can see, that makes a line of code read much more like an English sentence. Count letters in string, hello. It's natural. While there are many cases when using underscore is the right choice, Swift programmers generally prefer to name all their parameters. And think about it. Why do we need the word string in the function? What else would we want to count letters on? So what you'll commonly see is external parameter names like in, for, and with, and similar. So the Swift way of writing this function is to say, func count letters in str or string. And then use string here, and we'll do string here. And now when we call this thing, we have to say count letters in hello. And that truly is Swifty code. Count letters in hello reads like natural English, but the code is also clear and concise. Swift functions can return a value by writing a dash, then a right angle bracket, then a data type after their parameter list. Once you do this, Swift will ensure that your function will return a value no matter what. So again, this is you making a promise about what your code does. As an example, let's write a function that returns true if an album is one of Taylor Swift's, or false otherwise. This needs to accept one parameter, the name of the album to check, and return a boolean. Here's the code. Funk, album is Taylor's, name, string, returns bool. If name is equal to Taylor Swift, we will return true. Uh, if name is equal to fearless, we will return true. I'm not gonna write them all here, but you get the point. Finally, we'll do return false, if it's not one of those things in the list. And if you want to try your new switch case knowledge, this function is a great place where it would work. We can now call that by passing the album name in and acting on the result. We can say, if album is Taylor's name, Taylor Swift, then print, that's one of hers. Else, print, oops, print, who made that? And similar, uh, if album uh, is Taylor's, name being the white album, we'll print out, that's one of hers, else print, who made that? 